to hi it's me Maria thank you for joining us um, we're gonna hang out of course again today every day this is where you come to hang out come on tell your friends uh, every day starting at 8 30 ish <laughs> 8 30 ish Pacific Standard Time um, anyway today we're gonna try to hang out with Corbin Burnson and hopefully Harry Hamlin as well let's talk to these guys in the hangout right now let's see if we're gonna go to the live shot from LA hmm, maybe not maybe not no time okay no time they did not take us. How dare how dare they? Nick, Matt, John, and Hector. My boys are here in the house. That's my like <laughs> gang sign. Where the ladies at? My circle. Where's my girls? They don't like me anymore. That's what it is. I don't feel very liked anymore. Maybe they're jealous. No, they're not jealous. They're not jealous. Something's going on. Something is happening, and I don't know what it is. People aren't seeing the link anymore. You know how it easily pops up on the stream and you can just join. It's not as easy anymore, I guess. Huh? What's happening? They have a new feature where on the buddy list thing, uh, the, the chat column, uh -huh. it uh, shows the live video parties that your friends have started, but it uh, Hangouts on Air do not show up. I saw something on the stream yesterday, and I don't know if it was a you that posted it or somebody, and it said that there was an easier way to find out where all the quote-unquote parties are. I get so confused because first they were hangouts, then they were video calls, now they're parties. You know, it's weird because uh, Google itself has been calling uh, video chats just video chats, but they're commercial for Google Chrome, but they have out now calls them hangouts. Are they so? Yeah. Huh. So we're a little bit conflicted there. Because it shows a video chat going on and says, participate in Hangouts. Yeah, but then it said, party. Chris, I, you're, the link showed up on your end. See, for some people it does. For some people it doesn't. It's really confusing. I can't, I don't know why, but I'm so sleepy today. I just cannot wake up. I need some kind of... Um, an energy drink or something. Caffeine, coffee. Well, I've, this is my second cup, and it's not cutting it. And you I know, recommend Java Monster. Oh, no, those monster drinks are just hideous. What about Red Bull? No, Java Monster, it tastes like a Frappuccino. Well, I might have to get a Frappuccino later, because that does just have a lot of caffeine. Um, Java what, Monster tastes like a Frappuccino. Really? You yeah. know what's going on today, too. Today is my big event, you guys. If you're watching, please, please watch the link later, Mommy Loves Tech, um, on YouTube because we're having our one-hour discussion on teen dating violence. And um, I really want you guys to spread the word because I really want this message to get to teens. Okay? So I really need your guys' help. And Hector, I saw that you shared it. Yeah, I was about to say that. Yeah, I think you all shared it, actually, so I appreciate it. But if you're watching yeah. on air... Because I won't be able to attend. Yeah, I know you're working, yeah? Yeah, that's the reason I shared it to every follower of Fox 11 and Maria Quaban's followers as well. Thank you. I just want everybody to know about this problem. I mean, this is truly, truly something I want everyone to know about. Have awareness that, um, you know, this is happening in our teen community. And I want teens to know what a good relationship is supposed to look like. And I want them to know that if it's not going well, get out. Some people just don't. And I um, just really need to get this message out. Ayub, hi. How are you? Hey. <clears throat> I love how Hector comes in and out, in and out of the hangout. Ayub, I'm really <laughs> looking forward to seeing you a little bit later today. Yeah, that'll be fun. I need you to take a nap. I will. It's quite late for you later on this afternoon. 
Um, uh, it'll be fun. Yeah, it'll it'll be it'll be very very. Um, how do you say uh, educational later on this afternoon? Yes. And important discussion, and we'll also have some fun because we're actually going to be giving away some gifts. We're going to be giving away three big gifts to people who Ooh. are yeah will be um, actually answering tweets. And um, we'll have the rules are on our website. It's on mommylovestech.com. And I think I've I think I snuck the questions in. Don't tell Verizon, but I did. I put the questions up there so that people are ready. Mm -hmm. And then when I ask the question later on this afternoon, you can just quickly tweet the answer. But I have the the winners have to live in the United States. I'm sorry. For those who are not in the US. Hmm. I know, I'm sorry. <gasps> Stacy, I love you so much. Stacy. Here. Good morning, Stacy. Stacy, did you see my notification pop up on your stream in the join button? No, you did not. No, she doesn't have audio yet. Um, You're muted as well, Stacy. Yes. Did you see my notification pop up on your stream? No. Damn it. Why is that? So you saw the direct link and you joined that way? Mm-hmm. Ah, I can only think that that is why, you guys, that it's harder for people. Unless you're really on watching the stream and you see my direct link and then you jump in, you're not able to join. Did you mm. see that you did you see the direct link or did you see the notification? I actually saw both. You saw both. Do not mention Harry Hamlin. Not you because they used to work together, yes. Yeah, Harry wants to Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um I have two guests that are in the, in the newsroom that we could hang out with, and I don't know if you guys are familiar with Corbin Bernson, who is an actor. Um, yeah, I'm a huge L.A. Law fan, so yeah. L.A. Law? Mm -hmm. And speaking of L.A. Law, Harry Hamlin is also here, and I think it's a surprise because they don't know that, each, that they're each here, so <laughs> like, oh my god. It would be great if you could bring them both to sit down together in a hangout. I can't. Yeah, that that would be something. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I have a feeling, because I'm looking at the rundown, that we're only going to be able to speak to Corbin today. because, of, Or maybe not both, because this is a whole like surprise thing they're engineering out there. And I have to go and do um, a segment on Good Day, so... I don't know how this is all going to work out, unless Tony's here. Is Harry here? He should. No, but should we hang out with him first, or? Tony to the rescue. Yeah, he's supposed to be on at 9:20. We want to surprise Corbin with Harry, right? So we don't want Corbin or Harry to run into each other because Harry's going to walk on the bed at the end of Corbin's segment to surprise. Him. So maybe we should talk to Harry now, unless he doesn't want to talk to me. Um, I'm just worried because I. Don't want Harry to be in the halls or anything. Okay. Like so we're probably not going to be able to hang out with either of them. Well, we could hang out with Corbin right after his segment. Yeah, but I'm going out to do Van Cleef's. Oh. Well, I thought you said you couldn't do Harry, but you could do Corbin. Well, because it's going to be Corbin and then Harry and then Van Cleef's. But if Corbin is there and Harry's going to walk out during the end of his segment, I bet you they're going to keep Corbin over into Harry's segment. Which will then cut our time with Corbin. Do you understand? Yes. What about Zendaya? Zendaya? Zendaya. There was a no on it. Wasn't there a no? Heather just asked me if we want to bring her over. No, I didn't plan on Zendaya. I, didn't, I think we've hung out with her once before. I didn't push her at all. Do you guys know who Zendaya is? I don't even know what she's doing today. Is it singing, dancing? <laughs> Um, no, it's okay, because I have to get on the set soon, but okay. it'd have to be Harry. Okay, okay. Okay. The juggling of celebrity guests. Mm. 
do you know who's going to be in my hangout this afternoon? If you guys have little um, teenage girls, Ryan Beatty, who's apparently just huge on YouTube and on the internet. Do you guys know who he is? You're not the demo. Nope. Yeah, he's huge on the internet. Like, huge. Yeah, they but Cody Simpson. Caffeine. Is Cody Simpson one of the Simpson clan, like Jessica and... Oh, no, no, no. I don't think so. That's a good question. I really don't know. I don't know that. I do, I do not know for sure. Um, what else, you guys? What else is happening? Any more news on Google? Because I was reading a Ubes post that people will be able to find Hangouts a little bit more easily. Was that your was that your stream, Ayub? Yeah, um, and those are more like the private kind of Hangouts as opposed to Hangouts on Air. But there is a Hangouts on Air page mm. where you just go to the menu on the top over there, and um, um, you'll see Hangouts on Air as one of the menu options, and that will show you all the HOAs running at the moment. Ayub. I know I read your about page. Mm -hmm. Do you talk about that um, here, or is it saved for those particular? Directions? I have no problem talking about it. I never knew that um, you were a survivor of child abuse. Yeah, these kind of things happen. And uh, I think the more people who come through it with a reasonable amount of um, <laughs> of their sanity intact, uh, the more of uh, the more people talk about it, the the easier it is for people who are going through it to see just, light at the end of the tunnel. I'm just curious. I mean, this is a personal question, and you certainly all don't have to answer it. But who else besides a you here in this hangout? suffered some kind of child abuse when they were younger. Wow! I didn't know that about you, Maria, but... Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's four out of seven. That's a lot. Oh, five. Well, oh, John, anyway, not Stacy. <laughs> oh, John. Oh, wow. That kills me. It is, it is surprisingly common when you, when you find out about it. Wow. It's, it's one of those things that, that I grow up, or sorry, I, I personally think that as a father, um, oh, you, you cannot raise your hand to your children in anger. Mm -hmm. Hang on for a second. I really... <laughs> okay. This is a very important conversation, you guys, that we're having, and I'm going to put a pause on it, and I'm going to continue in a second. Um, we are going to be hanging out with, again, he's back, Kerry Hamlin. How are you? Uh, great. How are you guys doing? Um, very well. Did you? Did they find you a tie? They did. Look at you. I got a very striped tie. You look quite proper and quite yeah. um, like a litigator today. I'm very, I, I'm litigious today. You look today. litigious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Whose tie is that, I wonder? It's I don't know. Like this, uh, somebody was uh, obviously walking around tieless at the moment Someone here in the building. without and, uh, a tie. Yeah. They woke up this morning and they picked this tie out and they said, oh, this is going to probably get me lucky tonight. It looks good on you. It really does. Yeah. It's nice to see you again. I know we're Thanks. trying to keep you as a surprise. Um, I heard that. I heard for, that for yeah, be, yeah, because there's a little reunion. A little going impromptu on today. reunion mm -hmm. going on. Good morning, you guys. We have Harry Hamlin back in the hangout. I think you kind of remember how it how it goes, right? I think we were over there last time you were here. Um, were you not? You I'm were here okay. with your wife. I think, no, last I was time. here solo. Oh, you were solo and, at that and time. And I'm okay with moving around. Okay, like this. I can handle it. Well, you guys, Harry's here to talk about The Immigrant, a new movie that he is in. I uh, quickly want to introduce you, Harry, to Stacy. She's with us from Wilmington, North Carolina. Hi, Nick Stacey. is in Dallas. Great. Matt Hello. is in Anaheim. 
John is in the Inland Empire in Riverside, so is Hector. And we've got Ayuk, who's hanging out with us from the UK. He's in England uh, this morning. And we have a bunch of YouTubers watching. Hey, YouTubers, good morning. Um, good morning, Ivana and Chris. Thank you. And make sure you fuss and like us, please, and share the link. And tell everybody that we are hanging out with Harry Hemlin. Harry's going to have a little reunion on the set today with Corbin Bernstein, who is also an alum from... Uh, I know, he doesn't know. He doesn't know. From, from uh, L.A. Law. You guys remember no, You guys show. are all too young to remember no, L.A. Law. I'm looking at everybody watched. there. Oh, no, no, no. Huge fan of L.A. Law. Huge fan, <laughs> right? Yes, yeah, Stacy too. Um, so uh, Harry's here to talk about The Immigrant, which is a new movie. I've seen the trailer. It's a great, it's a great it's a independent very, film. This yeah. is a real indie. This movie was made for no money, and it's a true story about uh, a, a family that immigrated from the Soviet Union to the United States in 1978, mm -hmm. at a time when we were kind of in the midst of the Cold War with the Soviet Union, and Soviet immigrants were not looked on with a friendly eye here mm -hmm. in the U.S. Mm -hmm. They spoke no English. Mm -hmm. They actually had a much better life in the Soviet Union than they had when they came here, because mm -hmm. There they had a car, they had an apartment with great furniture. Here they had nothing. The guy, the character that I play, can't even get a job as a dishwasher because mm -hmm. I don't speak the language. So it just shows the journey of a, a Soviet immigrant in the United States at that time. And also there was a tremendous amount of abuse of these families, of these people who came over, yeah. and exploitation. Mm -hmm. And this is about that abuse and exploitation. And it's a true story. That the writer-director, Barry Searchin, this is his story, Oh, then in, it is his life story. It is his story, and, and I play his father in, oh in, the, in the piece. You're not such a good father in this piece. Huh? What? Well, I have some addiction. Yeah, 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 I have some substance abuse addiction uh, problems. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Ayub, yes, go ahead. It sounds like a very interesting movie, and I'm just wondering what attracted you to the role most. Um, for some odd reason, I've wanted to play a Russian. Um, I have this fascination with, with uh, Russia. I, I've never been to Russia, but I have a lot of friends who are from Russia. And I just wanted to find, to figure out the Russian uh, state of mind, uh, uh, state of heart, everything like this. I wanted to go into this person like this. Yeah. That, that just comes out just like That's that. That's brilliant. Uh -huh. Wow. And did you have to have a, a voice coach or anything like that that kind of uh, helped you stay? No, I did not. I did uh, accents and things like that have always been a passion of mine. So uh, uh, it's one of the things I do. I uh, love that. Uh, Makes it interesting in the household. I love it when my husband breaks out into his Jack Nicholson and all these kind of things. Anyway, I know you guys have some questions. I, Stacy, yes, go ahead, Stacy. Is it hard for you to be able to speak English, to play a role where you're not supposed to know how to speak English? Like, that would be hard for me. I don't... Well, is it hard to do that? It's an it is, a, and it was, it was a question that came up when we were making the film, because the way the, the script was originally written, uh, my character spoke no English whatsoever throughout the, the, the piece. Um, and so we tried to figure out how to have, at the very beginning, me speaking in Russian, um, which means I don't speak Russian very well, in fact. But so, and then I was going to segue into a Russian accent, um, and we were going to play the rest of the movie with a Russian accent. But uh, I decided, I said, look, you know, I, I think we ought to just do the whole thing in a in a very thick Russian accent and uh, give the impression that I'm I don't I'm not really speaking English. I'm actually speaking Russian through the whole thing. And, and I think it works, um, but it was actually very difficult to try and figure out how to make it look like I'm not speaking English. And not understanding. Am, and not understanding okay, anything that's going on. Yeah. Exactly. It's a really good question. Yeah. Um, Matt, listen to me. I have to get on the set now. I'm seeing my cue that I have to go on the set. So um, make your question really quick, and um, and then I'll, I'm going to have to run out. Go. Okay, it's uh, about Shameless. Uh, I was wondering if you, as a an, an actor, were to meet your character from Shameless, who is a homosexual pedophile, basically. Uh, um, how would the how would the two of you interact? How how would you react to him? I, I met before, him before you answer that question. You met him? Oh wow! I have to run on the set, you guys. I don't want to leave you by yourself. Can I talk to him? But, um, I can talk. You, 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 you can talk to him? You, you'll yeah, be fine? I'm okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll I'll be fine. nice. You guys take care of Harry, okay? I'll be right back. Okay. Right. Sure thing. Tony's with him anyways. 
No. Yeah, we can summon Tony. Is, is is if I met the the guy now, I there there actually is a guy who works for John Wells Productions, uh, whose name is Ned, and the character was actually molded after him. Now he's not a pedophile, but all of the other characteristics that you see in the character are he has. Um, and then they threw in the pedophile part um, just to add a little spice to it. But, you know, I mean, obviously, um, I, none of us likes uh, pedophiles. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. But I'm, I'm not a guy who would... I wouldn't welcome a pedophile into my home. But um, I don't know. I try not to judge people too much. But in that case, that's stepping over a line that I would rather not step over. It's just, yeah, it's just uh, interesting that... Uh, First off, th that you are brave enough to, to do that role because of the, the abhorrent nature of it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, but otherwise, other than, the, the, than that particular thing, your character does seem like to be, to be a pretty decent guy, but uh, uh, I really enjoy you in that role. Thank you, and um, I'm going to go back. I'm going to do more. So. <laughs> Did you always want to be acting? Like, what was your what were your aspirations as a little kid? Like, did you grow up saying, oh, "I want to, I want to do this when I grow up"? Or um, actually, I wanted to be an architect uh, when I was. Um, I, I knew that my parents would never accept the idea of my becoming an actor, and so I chose a much more acceptable profession, which was architecture. And I studied that a lot when I was in high school, and then I went to college for that. But I. I got waylaid when I went to Berkeley to study architecture and I couldn't get into the architecture department because I was late registering for it. All the classes were filled up and I ended up having to take acting classes and it just kind of went from there like a snowball. So that's what, uh, no I didn't, when I was a kid I didn't really want to do it. So who else, who's their hand up? Again, okay. Yeah, I got another one. Um, you, you also were, were in Mad Men, and you did a great job on Mad Men, uh, but you didn't come in until season six. Uh, was, was that kind of, was it weird to, to join a, a tight-knit group like that? Well, I, you know, I just kept my head down and kept as quiet as possible. I would sneak in and sneak out. I didn't try to uh, make any noise when I was there, and uh, because, yes, it is a well-oiled machine. It's their show. And uh, they've got it down. They know what they're doing. I, I just thought I would come in and if, m really, my main motivation when I got there was to not bump into the furniture and get my lines right. Um, and that's pretty much how it remained throughout the whole season. Uh, it just so happens that I didn't bump into any furniture. I did get my lines right, and uh, now I'm going to go back for some more. Oh, awesome. Well, um, I mean, you've gone from kind of clean-cut action hero in uh, in Clash of the Titans to lawyer to abusive father in Veronica Mars to um, a Russian. Uh, which do you think was the most challenging role for you? Um, you know, I, I always pick roles that have something about them that are very challenging. Um, Something I'm attracted to things that I don't think I can pull off, um, that are somehow just beyond my reach, and then I have to work a little bit harder to get there. And I think the most challenging thing I ever did was actually Dancing with the Stars. Um, that was, without question, the most challenging. Thank you. Thank you for stopping by. I have to run outside, you guys, and I think Anthony's going to take Harry back. Oh, I, I got to go. I'm being taken Is away. What can I tell Sorry, you? Sorry, guys. Thank <laughs> you. Thanks. Bye. It was Bye. great to talk to you. Thank you. It was you. lovely talking to you. See ya. Oh, we didn't get a picture. Um, no, we didn't get a picture with them. I'll take a screenshot from the uh, video in a while and tag all of y'all in it. Tony! Are you ignoring uh, us, Tony? Is Tony ignoring us? Yes, Tony is ignoring us. <laughs> We uh, left all by our lonesome. Left all by our lonesome, and Tony doesn't want to come and say hello. Why are you? Why are you taunting me? We can do anything we want because we're unsupervised. <laughs> why are you taunting me? Sometimes, it sometimes. is. You need a break, Tony, and it's nice to have a chat with friends for a little while. First of all, what's your blog about today? Well, first of all, before I before I get into that, I want to find out if um, if Nick is back in his uh, in his right mind after. Uh, 
knocking himself senseless. Are you okay, Nip? I think he is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think he might have knocked himself from whatever he was before into his right mind. I just wanted to make sure he's okay, because I, you know, that uh, I, I think you were probably as much stunned as you were anything else, right? I think I was unconscious, and then uh, I came back, and uh, it took a while to feel normal again. So were you, were you, kind, of, were you kind of disoriented? I hit my head on the cabinet over my toilet in the middle of the night and was knocked out for a good ten minutes. Ouch. I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but... I mean, but it's the over the toilet part that get, probably get, get you. Get, get, the, 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 no, no, the biggest question, Nick, is did you come up with a design for the flux capacitor? <laughs> <laughs> not, not quite. That did cross my mind, though. Hey, Tony. <laughs> Well, we're glad you're okay, Nick. That's yes. you. Tony. That's, that's what's important. Yes, yes, yes. Hey. yes. Awesome. Looks like you're going to be all by yourself in the studio because I think Aroxy is having all the fun. Oh, well, she gets to, she gets to do that. She, she gets to go out and have fun. And I, I What is Roxy doing today? She's doing Halloween costumes. She's at a, a, a Halloween superstore with, with all of these different costumes. And so every time... She does a hit. She's in a different costume. Yeah, right now, earlier, she was in a blonde wig holding a, a fake python on her, like the Britney Spears one. <laughs> and, and just a few minutes ago, she was like a disco. Batgirl. With an Batgirl afro. right now. There's the flash. There goes the flash. Oh, yeah, now they're outside the set. Afro that looked, you know, eerily similar to the one I used to have, actually. Your hey, Batgirl Tony. <laughs> Back in the day. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> yes, who's, who's talking? Right here, your bro. Yes, yes. Yeah, I remember a couple weeks ago they were telling you you were like Billy D. Williams, Lando Calrissian. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah. actually found out an actor who kind of reminds me of Tony as well. Okay, who's that? Am I going Press. to? First, well, before before you say who it is, let me warn you: I'm easily offended and insulted. So. No and, my feel, and my feelings are, are easily hurt. So now having having prefaced it with that, are you sure you want to proceed and uh, and and reveal who it is you think I look like? Not or, really. Well, it's because he wears a suit as well. Uh, another than actor, Cress Williams. Who? Cress Williams? Cress, no, can you put a picture up? Um, I can look for one because I'm not sure if you've seen the Because uh, I understand you had Dominic Purcell a couple weeks ago with Maria. He's no. the one who um, appeared on Prison Break on the fourth season, the very final season. Mm-hmm. He came in with sunglasses. He came in with a suit. He was here? Not at the studio, but I, he actually said, hey, Cress Williams, he reminds me of Tony. Where's the same, where's a good-looking suit? Oh, okay. Yeah, but Cress Williams has the cheekbones, and, and Tony doesn't have it. Sorry, Tony. Yeah, well, no, I, don't yeah. actually, I know I have, a, I have, a, I have a, what... what uh, Commonly referred to as a pie face. <laughs> pie face? Yeah, just kind of round and nondescript. You know, just <laughs> pie face. Yeah. Your face delicious like pie? Huh? Well, I, what? <clears throat> I've always, I've, I've always, kind of, I've always kind of. Kind of it's like Maria's I've, wearing I've a witch always, hat. Yeah, but I've always thought of Tony as more of a Carl Weathers than a um. Oh, Billy you know, Williams. Now that's interesting. You should bring that up, uh, Ayu, because um, that is someone who has, who, who I have been kind of compared to in the past. We kind of both have the round face and, uh, yeah. you know, big guns. I've, al- I've also, uh, I've also been uh, compared to uh, Carl Malone. Remember the basketball player Carl Malone? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I've idea. been compared to him. But if you as some of you may already know, if you want to know the person that I am most often uh, compared to is Martin Luther King. Uh, yeah, you mentioned that the other day. Yeah, and that's and, the person. And I can that, see it. And, and every single time, we, you know, when January rolls around and we do an MLK story, and somehow or another, I always end up doing that story, I mean, on the air, and they'll have a graphic of him right mm-hmm. next to me. You have no idea how many tweets we get. <laughs> I mean, it's Tony, like, it would yeah. be interesting to see you compare sensibilities with uh, John McKay here in Dallas because um, 
you know, you know, I know John McKay. But both you and him do editorials on air, and it would be interesting to see you, the two of you converse. You know, I know John. I've only met him once, um, but uh, he's, he, I, I didn't know whether John was still at WFAA. But um, he is. Yeah. He is. Okay. Well, well, WFAA used to own the station that I worked for in Sacramento, and on two occasions. Uh, I was flown, well, once I was flown, actually flown down to Dallas and stayed at the uh, Anatole Hotel. Yeah. Um, where I was wined and dined and interviewed and made to think that um, I could walk on water and then they didn't hire me. <laughs> that was back in the 80s, right? Uh, that was in the 80s. Yes. Yes. It was, it was around 84. Because I think the Anatole became Adams Mark and it's the Sheraton now. Oh, really? So, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was 84. And then um, around 88, instead of bringing me in, and um, and that's when I met John McKay, by the way. And at, and at that time, John McKay was the weekend anchor. Of course, this was long before you were born, Nick, so you wouldn't have known any of this. Um, but, um, and then in 88 or so, uh, WFAA just came, no, no, 90, in 1990. In 1990, WFAA just came out, you know, just outright offered me a job there as a reporter. Well, by that time, I had, uh, I had been, a, you know, I was, I was no longer reporting in the field. I was an anchor by that time in Sacramento. And I, you know, it was, it was the direction I wanted my career to go. And so I couldn't see going back to to on the street reporting, even though it would have been in a much larger market like Dallas, uh, you know, would have been a huge jump up from Sacramento. I just couldn't see doing it, and they were, I think, kind of really offended that I that I wouldn't take the job. Um, <laughs> uh, but I mean, you know, I had, you know, had had they offered it to me in '84 when I was still doing on the street reporting, I would have taken it in a heartbeat. Are you kidding? WFAA is a very prestigious station. Is it still the number one station there in Dallas? As far as I know, yeah. Actually, yeah. CBS might have an edge on it now. I'm not sure. But I mean, no one was even close to WFAA. Right. They were like the, the they were the ABC powerhouse there in Dallas, and a lot of their talent went on to uh, the national scene. In fact, one of their star reporters is now the anchor uh, of the CBS Evening News, Scott Pelley. He was. That's where he. That's where he came from. He came from WFAA in Dallas. One of them was Lisa Gibbons too. Lisa she's Gibbons, yeah. yeah. She's an entertainment reporter or a talk show host now or something like that. But yeah, she started yeah. out. In... Well, WFAA has uh, graduated a number of uh, a number of national stars. That they're really uh, they really are a, a very uh, classy operation. They really are. We need to get them involved in hangouts. So WFAA and John McKay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't know who anchors with him. The last I knew he was anchoring with another guy, which is kind of a strange thing to see these days. Two guys anchored. What? Although although a great idea for a hangout would be yeah. Tony and um John uh what? weekly just talking over the uh, the issues of the week. Angry black, black man. Stop it, you just interrupted IU. I didn't I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I excuse me. I Ooh, that's okay, not to worry. Into coming over here. So, are you what were you saying? Important issues like what? No, I was just saying that Tony needs to do a weekly hangout discussing the important issues in the news. I agree with you, and that used to be part of our thing. That used to be part well, of what in, we did every day. And in fact, but, if if you guys want to, before we, we get back to Ayub's discussion, if you guys wanted to know, because I think it was Matt who asked me what I was blogging on today, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm I'm blogging about um, <clears throat> the 17 year old who is now facing felony charges because she sent out a tweet. In fact, I should bring it over here so I can read to you the exact tweet that she, she sent out. She... Yeah, I read it this morning. It says, hashtag thoughts during school. Should I shoot up the school? What if I accidentally shoot someone I like? I hate everyone. What am oh, I boy. talking about? That's the, that's the exact tweet that she sent out. Law enforcement got a hold of that tweet or heard about it. They arrested her, and she's now under suspicion for... Felony. 
Uh, let's see what what's the exact charge? Felony serious? Um, mm, 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 mm. It is a felony charge. But I'm trying to think. I'm trying to see exactly what the charge. Probably felony conspiracy. No, she's. It's called. It's in my blog, but I I'm trying to look to see what the exact charge is. Do you see it here? Oh no. It's got to be in here because I. Uh, it's got to be in here because I. Oh, here it is. Suspicion of felony criminal threats. That's what she's put. Now, you know, a lot of a lot, and, and then it gets the story gets even more disturbing. Not only did she send out this tweet, uh, and and was arrested, and her house searched, and deputies dispatched uh, to the school. Um, but um, after her arrest, in a show of support, several of her fellow students also sent out threatening tweets to show that they were supporting her because they didn't think that she should have been arrested for they what were, she did. Were, were those like the copycat mm -hmm. uh, tweets then? Yeah. Okay. Um, they sent out similar tweets. Yes, uh, they're, they're similar threatening tweets. Now. Yeah, I don't know where the parents are. That is the question here because we're talking about kids, teens. Um, I, I don't know where they are. I, I don't know, you know, who the parents are. I have no idea um, what kind of discipline there is in that home, in those homes. But uh, you know what? I, I have no problem with, with, with these kids being arrested. Uh, with everything that, that has gone on, uh, with, with Sandy Hook still very, you know, fresh in our minds. How about Nevada with that kid in uh, that school? With that kid, uh, Columbine, all those things. I mean, even though Columbine happened some time ago, it's still very fresh in our minds. Um, I think a football player that tweeted that thing too earlier, or yesterday. I, I think well, you know, if it turns out to be a joke and she didn't really mean it, uh, etc., then. Her entire life is going to change because of this. And for me, I think the best thing to do with any kid that threatens that is not necessarily an arrest and a felony charge, but at least a 48-hour psychiatric hold where that person gets some therapy. Mm -hmm. and, and also, too, I, I'd like to go further or farther than that, and these parents need to be Oh, they need to be present for the therapy, and they need to be there. talked to as well. I agree. Yeah, because right. it, it really is. They're still under the parent supervision. On. But these kids have to be taken into custody. You can't just. But I don't think. Yes, but if it's psychiatric hard. custody rather than well, criminal yeah, custody, I think that's better. Should, whether they should face felony charges is is up for debate. Yeah, but, but, but they, but they should certainly be taken into custody. You can't let someone. Stay out on the street. Who's doing? Who's sending out you know a tweets like that? You just can't. No, you definitely can't. You have to. You have to bring them in, and you have to talk to them at least, and find out what the hell's going on. Yeah, the 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 counter argument, which I don't agree with, but the counter argument is that uh, these kids are are crying out for help, and you should be trying to help them, not trying to arrest them. I think that that argument is weak because of the fact that not only are you scaring all these people, basically yeah. a threat. Uh, but you're also if if you're you're just like oh let's let's coddle this person that encourages other people to do the same. Well, and not only and that, you don't want to encourage other people to do the same. Well, and you not want only to that, show hey, there's there there are consequences to these actions. Absolutely, well, and not not only that, but but you're also wasting resources. I mean, these deputies who could out, actually be out doing other things and and and, and you know. Are now having to go out and and deal with this situation and also go to a school where they didn't shouldn't have had to be, to begin with. I mean that costs us a lot of money, but it's also a, a waste of resources if in fact taking this is a them, joke. Taking them away from real. Crime. And, and exactly, and um, you know, no matter what we do to react, at the end of the day. A cry for attention isn't that picky about what kind of attention it gets. I mean, that's what they tell you about raising toddlers. Like, toddlers will do anything to get attention, be it positive or negative. And if you feed into the negative attention, kids are going to learn that 
oh, if I do good, then I'll get ignored, but if I do something bad, then people are going to give me the attention that I crave, either consciously or unconsciously. Well, and you're absolutely uh, right, Stacey. And, and here's the other thing I have, I have uh, you know, it's, it's one thing if uh, a seven-year-old or an eight-year-old tweets this out, this girl is 17. She's she's an adult. She's nearly an adult. She, you know, she's, 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 adult she's very age. close to being an adult. Not quite, but she is. 18, I mean, probably months away from being an adult. But they can uh, diagnose fairly well uh, violent tendencies, right? If you go to a psychologist's office, they have like uh, eight-hour tests where they can diagnose violent uh, tendencies uh, and uh, see if she's uh, a threat or not. Right? It, it depends on what the violent tendency stems from. If it stems from something like um, uh, mental disorders or chemical imbalance, then yes. Um, but if it doesn't, if it's just one of those like the cry for attention kind of violent tendencies, then they can't really diagnose that or forward diagnose it. They could differentiate between the two, though, I think. What does that mean, yeah? I think parenting really is a big part of this. Well, the thing is that parents are leaving social media to do their parenting for them, and nobody uses common sense in social media. People think that they can put a post on Facebook or make a tweet or put a picture up, and it's not going to have any repercussions because they're sitting behind a computer screen. Let me, and let Get me, 50 let me, people let me together in a room with an open microphone and someone's going to say something screwed up. It's just a, a matter of who. And you have hundreds of millions, so there's going to be a lot of screwed up things said. Well, but l let me just say this. If, if, as my mother used to say, the way she used to say it, if you're living in my house and you're planting your feet under my kitchen table, you know, it, it is my duty, my obligation, my responsibility, and my right to know what it is you're up to. Mm -hmm. And I will, and I will do that to the best of my ability, as thoroughly as I possibly can, whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. Well, it, I mean, it also feeds into what Shaka um, wrote about the other day that you know, parents have to keep an eye on their kids and see what their kids are doing online, and if and they it, don't do that, that and is it that hard with Twitter to keep? I mean, if you know your kids handle? Is it hard to follow them on Twitter? Many parents don't even check their Well, see, and that's my point. Many parents don't. They think it's a violation of their privacy or something. See, oh, yeah. Point. They friend their, their kid on Facebook or yeah. friend their kids on Twitter, and it's dumb. I don't really know what to do. He's got a movie that he's written and directed and starring in called Beyond the Heavens. I have He's coming in, and I have to get on the set like shortly after that. Okay, I also have to go because you I, have to go too. I have to, well, not only the makeup thing, but I'm the, I'm soloing the tin. I thought Bobby Dean was coming. party in the hangout. Mm -mm. I'm soloing the so tin. Getting, Bobby Dean's out on a oh, on a shoot. He's coming back, mm -mm. but he's gonna be here tomorrow. He's gonna be here tomorrow. Okay, here comes uh, Haley. Haley, why you interview Corbin Bernstein? Haley can do it. Oh, Haley with Shaka. Oh, Shaka can do it. That's to Shaka can do it. I like her hat. Can you interview like Corbin? Cute. Yeah, I like it. I I like that whole series of hats. Mm -hmm. Wait, who's coming? Harry. Harry. Corbin Burnson. Yeah, oh. Okay. Thought um, someone said something about Haley. Well, then maybe you guys can interview Corbin. <laughs> well, you know what? Well, I, you, guys great, you guys did a great job with Harry Hamlin. Yeah, you know I can get it started. Do you, do you guys have questions for Corbin? Of course. Okay, I can get it started and tell him that I have to excuse myself and then let him... I may be able to get it started. Um, Unless Tashaka can sit in uh, after no. whoever gets it started. Oh, has, he has other things. He has other duties. To to you see how, see, how, see how thinly we are spread here? Yes. Yeah. It actually is becoming a little bit more of a challenge to do the hangouts for, for us. For me in particular. I can hear him. Is he... I think he's coming. I have to go and put on a million dollars worth of diamonds. Ooh. Take pictures. Well, Maria's rich. No. Well, poor you. I take lots of pictures. That sounds like fun. That means that means there are, gun, there are men with guns yes, out there in the hallway. There are. Yeah. There, there literally <laughs> are one, two, four men in dark with gu suits. With guns. Let's let's make that very clear. They and have guns. They are mm -hmm. constant. There's two, it takes two at least minimum to stand around the Van Cleef and... Well, what's the other one, Van Cleef? Is it Winston? Is Winston one no, of them? Van Cleef and Arples. Oh, oh, Van Cleef and Arples. 
Is yeah. it our pals? I, our pals? I don't know. I'm wearing a ring that Jennifer Lopez wore and a bracelet that um, Julia Roberts wore in oh, okay. Pretty Woman. Oh. Yeah. And, you know, both of those both of those items of jewelry will never have been on better looking person. Oh. I'm going to go away now. I, I okay. couldn't possibly agree more. <laughs> I, I, could, I could not possibly agree more. Okay, I'll be right back. Um, so that's what that's what my blog was on. Um, it's uh, it's sad uh, how entitled that generation of young adults is. Just saw Lawrence Savon running. Oh, I just all I'm saying is that my parents never let me get away with anything. Oh yeah. my God, mine, mine, mine either. Didn't either. Mine didn't either. I, I was part of that fun first generation that had the instant messenger and the AOL and the chat rooms and all that stuff. Oh my god! No, no way! No, no, that was not me first, first generation. Me too. Me well, too. BBS no, like, were first generation. Me. Prodigy was second generation, and then that was third generation. Yeah, yeah. No, my parents couldn't do anything to me at that point. I was in my forties already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, with, like. With, Computers became well, accessible. All that stuff started to happen. <laughs> Tony, Tony, you know that no matter how old you are, once they call your name in that certain oh. way, <laughs> then yeah, you're in trouble. It's the look, the mom look. Oh, oh, she used to do that. Oh, gosh, I would be in church. I could be anywhere, but it was, it was usually in church that I would get the look because, you know, you have to be, you know, when you're in church, you know, you know how it is. Yeah, you got to be. <laughs> You know, and boy, I'll tell you, she would give you, she, she'd be all the way on the other side of the church, and she'd give me that look. And it, you could feel it burning holes in your oh. eyes. And, oh. Oh. and whatever, It would stop me dead in my tracks, whatever I was doing, because what, I knew. So, Tony, what, 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 what would she call you when she was angry? Do you have a middle name? What's, what's the... What's the what? What's your middle name? What's the what are you? What's your middle name? My middle name? Why do you want to know are you? Because, because he's wondering what, what you're... So Anthony, we can see how it rolls off what, the tongue. I'll give, you, I'll, give you, I'll give you a hint. Uh, my middle name is the last name of a very, very famous actor who frequently played cowboy. Clint Wayne. Huh? Wayne. 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 Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so Tony it was it was Anthony Wayne McEwing. What yes, are you was, doing? It, it was Anthony <laughs> Wayne McEwing. Yes. That's funny. <laughs> Will you please go back and crawl into whatever hole you came out of? <laughs> Ooh, burn. <laughs> I'm sorry you had to hear that, but <laughs> was is is that your your nemesis? Yes, it's Eli of course it's Eloy. Who else would, who else would I? I wouldn't tell that to Maria. <laughs> who else would I say that to, but Eloy? Um, yes, it's Wayne. Yeah. So um, you know that was that was kind of a little bit of a debate when I uh, when I first started on the air whether I was going to use my formal name. It, it wasn't much of a debate. I, I thought Tony sounded a lot friendlier than Anthony. Anthony sounds so formal. Yes. To me. Um, yes, uh, you're 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 too friendly to be a Anthony. You're a Tony. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely a Tony. And I I thought it was it was much more fitting. And you know, uh, I hadn't been called Anthony since. Um, Oh, I guess I, I guess my teachers in high school called me that. No one called me that once I left high school. Unless you got in trouble. <laughs> um, yeah, no, you know, even then nobody would call. Yeah, it's just. In fact, I don't know that. I don't know that my mother ever called me Anthony. I don't really. I don't, no, I don't recall. I don't recall ever hearing that name in my household when I was growing up ever. You know, other than, you know, if, if 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 it was something official, you know, but but never never, I was never addressed as Anthony, never. You I know, Tony, been... um, uh, you ever watch the TV show Scandal? 
No, I've heard it. I've heard about it, but I've never watched it. There is a reporter there mm-hmm. who has almost your exact voice. Like the first time I heard it, I'm all like, "Oh, Tony, Tony's on Scandal." And then and then I actually saw the reporter and it was I think it was some white guy. Well, but I'm all like, that's it, very- he sounds just like you. And he's a white guy, no less. <laughs> uh, well, no, I um, I'm certainly scandalous, but no, I've I've never seen the actual show Scandal. <laughs> I've never I've never had a chance to watch. But really, I mean, he actually is he on there like frequently, or is he? Well, I mean, he's not he's not a major character or anything, but that uh, uh, you hear his voice quite often. Like mm-hmm. uh, uh, anytime they they flip to the news, and they flip to the news a lot in in this yeah. particular show. Like half the time, it's it's him. Wow. Okay. That's interesting. I've never really known anyone to to have my kind of voice. I I've never liked my voice particularly, honestly, to be really honest with you. Um. You know, I've i i it's it's one of the things I've worked on quite quite a long time to to try and 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 get it where I want it to be in it, and I still haven't gotten there. <laughs> Well, I don't know that it, that it really matters if you like your own voice. It's if the girls like your voice, and, and I think they do. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that, man. I, you know. I like your voice, Tony. Okay, and you're a girl, so I'm thank a girl. You. <laughs> yeah, am I the only one here? Oh, I'm the only girl. Oh. Yeah, but you know, you're I don't think anybody has a problem with that, Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> None of the people in this thing, I, I have the least feminine girl to be holding down the lady side of, of this hangout. <laughs> it's funny because we used to, I mean, we used to have, like, it used to be like half and half, right? I mean, at one time. At yeah. Because we had Kim, we had uh, Gracie, we had... Clarissa would come in from time to yeah. time. And then uh, who's the lady who lives oh, in Utah? Right. And who's in Utah? I can't remember her name. Sheila, is it Sheila? Oh, oh, uh, Sheila. Sheila. Sheila would come in quite frequently, and, um, yeah. But, you know, it's cool, you know, as long as, as long as, as long as people show up. And, and, um, you know, uh, now we, we have Hector becoming a regular, although he kind of comes in and out. I, I never really quite know what's going on with Hector. Yeah, it might be my computer, Tony. Hey, and speaking of people telling, talking about your voice, has anybody else called you to do, like, voiceover work? No, and I don't think they ever would because I'm not good at it, to be honest with you, Hector. Um, Just by reading the script, you might. Well, because to be because to be very good at voiceover work, you have to be able to do voices. And I only have one voice; it's the one you hear. <laughs> <laughs> no, true, but I, uh, it would be cool, cool if one of these um, t- days, if Matt Graney ever calls you to to be a special guest star. For a Kent Brockman on the morning news, you can actually fill in for him. Well, yeah, well, I've done, you know, I've, I've with done, your very own voice. I've done a couple of movies, um, actually, um, and it was fun. Um, I seen Maria Cuban on Bruce Almighty a long time, a while ago, when that first movie came out with Jim Carrey. What about it? And I I did see Maria Cuban making a special appearance on the movie oh, yeah, Bruce yeah, yeah, Almighty. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you know that's that's the only thing they'll let us do is is play, and and they're not really all that hot on letting us do that. Anymore. Anchor or reporters, yeah. Yeah, but that's the only thing they'll they'll let us do. I was in my first movie was Big Mama's House, the first one. With Martin Lawrence and uh, Terrence Howard. Hmm. Martin Lawrence and Terrence Howard. Yes. Yes, that, that was, was a good movie. I think yeah. I did see you before on that on the scene where you were reading the the were you a reporter or a news anchor? I don't remember how that movie went. I was a news anchor, yeah. And then the uh, other I guess I have to watch it on Netflix then. If it if they have it, if not, I can just watch it on live stream. And then the other one was a, a movie that I don't think anyone saw. Uh, it was a very low budget movie. Uh, and, and even though it had huge star power, I don't think anyone ever saw it. It was called The United States of Leland. And it oh. starred and it starred I know, no one's trust me, Ayub. I think maybe three people, and I think I was one of the three. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, it starred Ryan Gosling. Um, Kevin Spacey and Don Cheadle. I mean, we're talking about good names. Yeah, good names, three good actors. Don Cheadle, huge, huge, huge names, and it just, it just didn't get any traction. It just, it, you know, I think it was, it, I think it was in the theaters for like two days. <laughs> that was it. 
But uh, I wonder if they even posted it that. on DVD or Blu-ray. Oh, I'm sure it's out. It's it's out there somewhere. You know, I got to be honest with you. It wasn't that great, but it was an interesting. Um, it was an interesting character study. I think it, it probably could have been done better. And what it was about was this. Um, Ryan Gosling played this kid, whose best friend, one of his best friends, or his best friend, was this autistic kid, and he ends up killing him. He kills him. And they just can't figure out, because they were such good friends, why Ryan Gosling killed him. And Ryan isn't really saying. Um, and so they you know, that the whole movie is basically them trying to figure out why he did what he did. And you never really find out why he did it, which is kind of frustrating, but um you, you, you know, it's, it was it was a disturbing movie, I thought. It sounds like it. Yeah. Especially if it doesn't you don't get closure, that leaves it open to be more disturbing. Movies yeah. that don't have closure are very freaky. Huh? Movies that don't have any kind of closure at the ending, and it doesn't even have to be a happy closure, any kind of closure. Right. But if you don't do that at the end of the movie, you're just kind of like, what? Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, I think it just kind of leaves you, you know, hanging. And and I think when you're talking about a movie like this where a kid is murdered, you know, you you know, you really have that feeling. I mean, you really leave with 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 this very horrible. You're left with this horrible feeling of what what what. What the hell did I just watch? <laughs> why, why, did, why did that happen? <laughs> you know, so I wasn't thrilled when I saw it, and I'm because I because you know when when they ask us to do things like this, we have no concept really of you know we just have the biggest idea of what the movie is. We don't necessarily know much at all about the movie because all we're doing is our little thing, which is usually very you know small in nature. It's a very small part. I mean, I think I was in. Big Mama's house for all of 30 seconds and you saw me on camera for all of a second and a half, if that. Well, I, I actually remember the poster. I just had a look at it and I remember that poster um, thinking, Don Cheadle, I want to watch it, but I never got around to watching it. Yeah, you know, I don't think it's something you would really want to watch, I, to be honest with you. I think it's just, it's, it's very disturbing. <laughs> hi, John. I'm saying hi on Stacy's camera. Hi. The hand. Yeah, I was Hello, hand. Say, like, Hey. Tony, you've almost convinced me to watch it, actually. Really? Yeah, like uh, right, right now, kind of like my favorite movie is is Donnie Darko, which is is kind of well, very love, open ended ending. But I love Donnie Darko. That I mean, it's just, but that's just strange. That's just a strange movie. That's one of those cult classics, though. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I love Donnie Darko just because you just look at it and go, "What the hell is this?" <laughs> you know, but you like it, you, and you don't really know why you like it, <laughs> except that you just kind of like it, right? Uh, it's Rocky Horror season. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's another one, Stacy, that I love. I love Rocky Horror Picture Show. And there, there's no real rhyme or reason to the movie. It's just all about being fabulous, oh, right, and right. Tim Curry is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, and you know, and, and it's interesting to see the people who went on from that to become huge stars, like Susan Sarandon. Yeah, that's such an. If you were to see Susan Sarandon well, like after that, with all of the roles that she's played, and then to place her in Rocky Horror, right it's so very strange. Yeah, it is kind of, huh? Well, for for like twenty years, she tried to to distance herself from that movie. She's finally kind of accepted it recently, but uh, I mean, she tried to stay away from that movie why would, forever. Why would she do that? I mean, I don't I don't get it. Because she got like serious roles after that. And she's running around in, in her bra and underwear in, in Rocky Horror. <laughs> okay, I guess. I guess. I guess that makes sense. See Corbin going to never come? No. You know, that's so weird. <laughs> Originally, we were not going to talk to Harry Hamlin. We were only going to talk to Cor Corbin. And then it, he's never known. He's never known. Saw you on TV, Maria, with all the jewelry. You, Maria Sansone, Julia, and Lauren. Nice. Is my birthday coming up soon, Tony. If you're looking for a gift for me for my birthday. All you have to do is tackle four armed men right outside the door. Yeah, that would be the only way to see get it. There are four armed <laughs> um, Tony, I think if you manage to tackle those four armed men and get away with those diamonds, I don't think Maria would get them. I think Maria would get a cut. <laughs> she might get a distracting small cut. them. She might get a small cut. I'd, I'd be fencing the others. <laughs> but, you know, I looked at them up close, to be honest. I looked at them up close. And, I mean, they're pretty and all, but 
they're really, really expensive, $100,000 for that one. I think even if I had a lot of money, I don't know if I would buy it. I just don't know if I would. I guess because I'm that kind of person. Like, I don't really You know, it just kind of depends. You know, I think about, I think about Warren Buffett. I really do. Um, I mean, here's a man that literally can Billions. afford anything. He's the, he's the third richest man on the planet, third or fourth. On the planet. On the planet. Um, I think third. And, um, I mean, can afford anything. He doesn't own a cell phone. He drives around this old truck. He lives in the same house he's always lived in, and it ain't a big one. It's, it's a very modest house. You know, you know, by comparison, I mean, it really is modest. And, and he's never bothered to move from that house in Omaha. Uh, I mean, who does that, you know, when, you, when you're worth 50-something million dollars or whatever? He's a uh, practical I mean, 50-something billion, excuse me. 50 billion? Someone who is, um, someone for whom money is just a matter of keeping score. Yes, it is. It's not really, doesn't affect his life. Now, what I mean, is it? <clears throat> considering, <throat> considering if he, if he, if he, if he blew money the way some other people do, especially in the entertainment business, he wouldn't be the third richest person on the planet. He'd well, be fourth or fifth. And can I tell you this? Um, uh, one of his relatives, I won't, I won't say who, is a very close friend of mine. And uh, I mean, but it's, it's a, one of his very close relatives, very, very close relatives, is a very close friend of mine. And, and so I, I know his family pretty well. And I have to say that he has instilled that, that way of thinking into his family. And they sure. all... They all think like that. They all think like that. They don't, you know. Maria knows that. You're I, friends with um, the younger. Yeah. He's a grandson. He's the grandson. Yeah. Um, and. Um, hey, you never know it. You said. They, no, oh no. They all have that. You know, it's 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 wonderful. It's it's a wonderful thing to see, and it's it's good to see that people do have perspective. Some people can have that kind of money, and have perspective. Because I don't see a lot of people who have anywhere who don't have anywhere near that kind of money. They're wealthy, but they don't have anywhere near that kind of money, and they've lost all sense of perspective. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's just it. Is, oh, yeah. is that's something that that I've never understood. Like we were talking to Andrew Dice Clay uh, a couple months back, but then we also have people like uh, Nick Cage and all these other people who have had all these millions and millions, I mean tens, or maybe bank. even hundreds of millions of dollars, and now they're broke. They're going to bankruptcy. What were you going to ask it's me? It's like. Are you, what were you going to ask me? Nothing. Oh, you should wait. Um, well, I was just thinking that, that if they had placed this money into a bank and just lived off the interest, they could have lived oh, easily. nice and happy, long lives and still been well set up. Yep. There's actually that's a lot exactly what we would do if we won the lottery. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I would do too. But there's actually a lot of actors whom, you know, you'll go, oh, whatever happened to so and so or whatever. They were the smart ones. Like they took their money that they made when they were younger and they invested, invested their money. Invested them well, and they just, you know, they're. You know, you know who did that? And yeah. even though he came back into the spotlight and, and made a bunch more money, there was a time, a period of time that he he, a, a pretty significant period of time that he he did not work, and he said it. It bothered him only because he wanted to work, but not because he needed anything, because he invested his money so well, and John that's John Travolta. Travolta. Yeah, Yeah, John Travolta. Yeah, he, he didn't need to, really. He, he didn't need to work. But he came back with Pulp Fiction, you remember? Yeah, he came back with Pulp Fiction, yeah. but he didn't, and he wanted to work. Right. But he didn't need to, because he had invested his money so well from the uh, uh, Welcome Back Cotter days. and Saturday Night, set, yeah. Fever. Fever, yeah. he had invested his money so well, he would never have had to work again. And he said, he says, I, I didn't need money. I, I had plenty. He was very smart with his money. And you can tell just from his acting that he is the type of actor that does not do it for the money. You could all, I don't know if it's just me, but I can always... I don't, you just get this vibe off of certain actors or yeah, I think people like that who yeah. aren't doing it for the money. They're doing it because they thoroughly enjoy mm -hmm. what, they, what do. they do. And then there are some where they go, I'd be stupid not to take that money, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make that really awful movie because... You know, I can put that money to... Well, we've seen a lot of them do that. Um, I mean, you know you know who one prominent actor who's been accused of doing that is uh, Robert De Niro. De Niro completely. 
completely. That he's, you know, but he'll just basically take whatever role because like, they'll, they'll, pay, they'll pay him the money. Hey, we'll pay you twenty mil. Okay, fine, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, he, you know, I mean, De Niro's a great actor. He's a great, great actor. But he's made some really bomber, stinker movies too. Because he wanted the money. He took the money and ran. Mm -hmm. They're outside again. What is this? Am I supposed to be outside? Is that Mara with a green wig? Yeah. Mara's all decked out. What's up, Francis? Those kids are so cute. I don't know. There was, but not really for consumption. Francis, how are you today? You've been laying low. You've been pretty quiet. I'm scared of you, Tony. Why are you scared of me? What did I do? You're always picking on me. I pick on you? How do I pick on you? Tell, tell the people, tell the good people of the Google Plus Hangout what it is I do to scare you. I, I want to hear it too. That look you give. What? Tony? <laughs> Tony, you Tony? scared him. We laugh at Tony. Ha ha ha. Tony, have you seen the t-shirts he's wearing every day? Padded t-shirts. Have you seen those padded t-shirts Tony's wearing every day? Spanx for men. Who, who here would wear Spanx for men? Why not? That was the story we did today about. Yeah. Did you guys hear this about is this? Not Spanx. Uh uh. <laughs> I, I saw him. Yeah. I could feel you go. They're muscle shirts that actually give you muscle. That actually make it look like you have muscles. They, right, right. I've seen those. Added bras for men. But you, yeah. and our, you the main thing is Tony already has muscles, so why is he making them look bigger? Yeah, that's no, I why would, he wouldn't do I it. Wouldn't. He wouldn't. Here's the deal, guys. It, they were asking women if women would get upset. But at the same time, you know, if he's taking off his shirt, you meet somebody, yeah. takes off his shirt, it's padded. Well, isn't it the same for a guy? You meet some girl, you think she's some way, and she has a padded bra on? Yes? Yeah. No? False advertising? It's the exact same. It's exactly the same thing. It is. Uh, the the, the difference is, is for a female, I can uh, assume that, that if a guy did that, it would be a deal breaker. Where a guy, if a female did that, it's like, you know what, who cares? Doesn't matter. Well, but yeah. it's not it's a deal breaker, Matt. Point. It's Doesn't not matter. a deal breaker because it is so much a part of, of, of our society. I mean, women wear makeup. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. Yes. Women enhance whatever their attributes are because they that's like, what they no. do. Some of us don't. <laughs> well, because some of you don't need to, Francis. Oh, <laughs> <Yes, sorry, yes. laughs> some don't need it. Tony, I love you for that. Stacy doesn't need it. Look. Um, you're a natural, Stacy. Look at you. Lucky. Well, Stacy, you're beautiful. Lucky, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Stacy doesn't wear makeup. Stacy doesn't wear stuff in her hair. My husband Stacey is very, is very creepy when Stacy speaks about herself in a third person. <laughs> 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 um, I'll, I'll, just, I'll, I'll try. Let me find it. I think I, my recent um, profile picture from like a couple months ago was of me wearing makeup, and everybody said that it was very, very strange to see a picture of me with makeup on. Yeah, my my weather producer here, Erica, the same thing. Like one day she'll come in, she'll have makeup on, and I'm going, wow, I don't rec I don't recognize it her. Freaks you she out, does. doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Um, yeah. Well, I'm going to have to run. I have yeah, this little I show I have to do. What, you're just... angry by yourself. Go. Yes, go, go, go. Okay. Go, Tony. Listen, we Good have luck, to Tony. All right, Tony. Take care. Guys. A reminder. I'll see you later on. Don't forget okay. this afternoon at 3 o'clock, um, my event, um, End Dating Violence. We're going to do it. We're going to raise awareness. And we're going to really raise great, money. That's really great, Maria. Will this be on the Hangout too, Maria? Yes, it'll be um, on Mommy Loves Tech Hangout later on this afternoon. We want to raise awareness and we want to help raise money to for so that schools can continue to go to uh, this program can continue to go to schools to talk to kids and teens um, and websites that can be a resource for those who are suffering and in domestic abuse situations. Um, okay. So we'll see you this afternoon. Okay, spread the word. All right, I will. I'll, I'll share it again on uh, Google and I'll even share it on Twitter and Facebook. Thanks, you guys. I really, really appreciate it. And um, I'll see you a little bit later. Ayub, I'll see you later on. Um, yeah. Look out for my notification around 2.15, 2.30. I'll see you then. Okay. okay. All right. All right, Maria. Bye. Take care. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Welcome. Bye. Bye.